Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host, Sean McGahee, and this is a show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can listen to Day Spring Discussions on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, Patreon, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever, guys. While you're there, go and rate, review, subscribe, then head on over to the Facebook group and Twitter account and join in the discussion. Well, hello everyone. It is a dreary Monday morning here in Austin, Texas. All weekend, it's kind of been on again, off again with the rain due to the hurricane that's been up on the Gulf Coast. So, I've been trying to, you know, do stuff outside, but it keeps raining off and on like yesterday. I was outside with a friend hanging out and, you know, it started to rain, so we had to go inside and it was, it was something. So either way, we're getting along just fine here. I hope you are too. Now, of course, as we know, this past weekend was Comic-Con and they did things a little differently. It's Comic-Con at home where the Comic-Con website had all their pre-taped panels online you go on, you watch them, and then, you know, you can enjoy everything that way. Not quite the same experience as what Comic-Con usually is, but in these COVID times, it's kind of the best we could hope for. Like, at least we got something from all of this. Now, um, I watched, of course, some of the Comic-Con footage, and that's what I like, too, is, like, it was all pre-taped, officially done, to where, you know, you weren't looking at some, you know, viewer's camera phone with bad audio and bad picture it was you know officially done by comic-con to where the quality of it was pretty good as far as reveals there was some good stuff going on depending on what your cup of tea is of course but you know overall i think it was a pretty good experience in my consideration now congruently zach snyder had his own little con going on and what he called or what people called justice con now he teamed up with the nerd queens um for what people call justice con now basically what it is is it's you know kind of their own thing where they got together and Zack snyder discussed working on his cut of the upcoming justice league film that is going to be put out on hbo max and of course a lot of people excited about it um i feel like with this justice league movie it's, you know, uh, th- there are films throughout history that are known to be, you know, controversial, and especially in, you know, geek culture. A lot of films, you know, have people have a lot of opinions about them, even, say, The Last Jedi. Justice League has been just one wild ride after another as far as its production and, you know, release, and now coming back for a re release. So Snyder talked to um, the Nerd Queens about kind of, you know, a little bit of information about the upcoming Snyder Cut of Justice League. It's going to be released on HBO Max. And, you know, this weekend or after it came out, I think it was Saturday when the actual interview was released, several sites were putting out several pieces of information. This morning, The Hollywood Reporter uh, kind of did like a summary of what it was actually, um... Actually, they did. Well, no, it was Saturday. They put it out. Actually, it was Saturday afternoon. They put this out. I just saw it this morning too. But kind of summarized what was said in the interview. Kind of the talking points and kind of the new information that we got. So I want to kind of run down that a little bit. Discuss kind of the new pieces of information we have, and uh, kind of go from there. Of course, you guys fire back in the social media groups and Gmail account. Let me know what you think. Okay, so to start off, whenever I talk about this upcoming Snyder Cut of Justice League, I always like to kind of plant my flag as for where I stand on the DCEU film. So, you know, Man of Steel, as a big Superman fan, I was not a big fan of it. I liked parts of Man of Steel, um, but not a huge fan. It was Really, it comes down to the story choices that they made in Man of Steel for a Superman origin film. Not exactly happy with some of the story choices they made. And the more I watched the film, the more I realized that's kind of where it is. It's not the performances or the directing or, you know, the cinematography or anything like that. It's really, like I said, the story choices that I'm not a huge fan of uh, for that. Batman v Superman, I remember seeing that in theaters. And by the time it was getting to the end 
I felt like it was absolute piece of crap. That's <laughs> what I thought. Um, however, Batman v Superman, the ultimate cut, I think is a great film, honestly. And really, that kind of uh, cut is what's giving me hope for the Snyder Cut. Because, again, like I said, I'm a Superman fan. And I was very hesitant when they said that after the first Superman origin film, the first film in their expanded universe, uh, to do a Superman sequel, they were going to bring in Batman. They wanted to set up Justice League. And that's really, you could tell from the whole film, that's what they were doing is, number one, they were setting up Justice League to come. But if you watch the the theatrical cut versus the ultimate cut, 30 minutes were taken out of the film, and those 30 minutes was Superman stuff. Okay, you could definitely tell that Warner Brothers wanted to make more of a Batman film because Batman is kind of their go-to character where they know that's what most people like, and that one, that's the character that makes them the most money. So as a Superman fan, I didn't like it so much, and you could tell it was just so jumbled as far as the theatrical cut, that it was, you know, not great. Uh, missing story points, even, um, with a lot of holes. But when you go back and watch the ultimate cut, um, the story made a lot more sense, a lot less plot holes. Still, you know, has its problem, as every film does. Every film has its problems. But uh, the ultimate cut had less of them, and I really enjoyed the ultimate cut. And again, that's what I'm hanging my hat on, uh, hoping that the Snyder Cut can be good. Next film from the DCE universe was Suicide Squad. Um, that was kind of a hot mess in my eyes. You know, I was excited for it because it was David Ayer who was directing it, uh, who's done some great films in my eyes, and I thought it could be a really good film. Now, of course, rumor is that he got the film taken away from him, and the finished edit was done by a trailer company. And, you know, there's still, you know, parts kind of like a Snyder Cut, an air cut out there. Now people are campaigning for an air cut as well. You know, for me, it's one of those things where I was surprised we were even going to get a Snyder Cut such as this. I'm happy we are because, you know, I'm anxious to see it. But I think, you know, all these campaigns and petitions to, to see these director's cuts or unfinished cuts of uh, the film, um, it's, it's a bad precedent in my eyes. And while, you know, I'm, I'm anxious to see Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is not the official title, apparently, you know, I, again, I think it sets a bad precedent, that uh, type of behavior where people are, you know, crying at the top of their lungs to get what they want, and you give in to them like a toddler, more people are going to start crying for it, or at least for what they want. Then you had Wonder Woman, uh, a fine film, you know, and I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that Patty Jenkins directed it. And that she was very uncompromising in, you know, what she wanted with uh, the film and what the studio wanted to do as well. Because there's a rumor, not, you know, I think it's confirmed, that the No Man Land scene where uh, Diana takes off, you know, her, her coat, her robe, and reveals her full Wonder Woman outfit and goes out and fights the, the what, not the, not the allies, what are the, what are the other guys um, the Axis, is that what they are in, the, in World War I, World War II? Yeah, the Axis, and it's a, the best scene in the whole damn movie, and I guess the studio wanted to take it out, um, Patty Jenkins fought for it, so that gives you a little mindset there too, and then you get to Justice League, where, you know, it's sad that Zack Snyder originally had this five-picture idea for, you know, kind of almost the DC characters, or really Superman, he was Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Justice League Part 1s and 2, and then a uh, Man of Steel 2 or Superman 2. But what happened was is that Man of Steel and Batman v Superman didn't get the critical claim and the financial um, success that Warner Brothers wanted. You know, Warner Brothers wanted the DC characters, the DCEU, Zack Snyder's films to, you know, do what Marvel Studios was doing, what Kevin Feige was doing. They want him to be beloved and make a billion dollars. And in, you know, this industry or, or anything really, I think, you don't, you know, become rich and, you know, popular, famous, whatever, by 
being second. You know, you do it by being first, by being the trendsetter. And Marvel set the trend. And while DC was different in, you know, a lot of their tones and, and what they were doing, it wasn't what a lot of audiences wanted. And to me, especially, again, going back to the ultimate cut of Batman v Superman, I look at it and I love that film um, and kind of the, the story it tells. Yes, the tone is very different from Marvel Studios, but that's fine. That's what we want. We don't want the same thing out of all of our genre comic book films. You know, much like Logan or Deadpool or Dark Knight or, you know, whatever. You want different uh, types of films from every comic book film because every hero is different every comic book is different so giving the, the different tones uh is, is fine by me but going back to the story with you know man of steel and batman v superman at least the theatrical cut um audiences didn't like him as much you know and uh, it didn't make the money that warner brothers wanted to and that's when they got skittish. You know, they were putting a lot of money into Justice League. It was supposed to be their Avengers. They were hoping it was going to make over a, mil a billion dollars, maybe even, you know, two billion if it was done right. So they started playing with stuff. You know, they by the time, you know, uh, Batman v Superman came out, you can tell half hour that film was cut. It was Superman. Why? Because a lot of people didn't respond to Man of Steel. So they took as much as they could out and tried to make it a Batman movie, which is, you know, the Batman is the character that's made Warner Brothers the most money, so they tried to make it a Batman movie. Congruently, they took Suicide Squad and tried to pop it up, you know, make it more fun, so to speak, as opposed to the vision that David Ayer probably had for that film. You know, they took the film away from him and tried to make it as fun as they could, thinking they were going to replicate what Marvel was doing with their films and hopefully be as popular and you know some people like the film and if you do that's great but I, I think it's a hot mess and uh, I, I think I've only seen it maybe once actually it was in theaters just because I was so unimpressed with it and Wonder Woman like I said there was you know Patty Jenkins there and you know from stories that I've heard um, of course, rumors, nothing, I don't think, really confirmed. She got a lot of, you know, pushback from the studios as far as how she was making her movie. And she dug her heels in and said, nope, this is the movie that we talked about making. This is the film I'm going to make. And that's really what, you know, the filmmaking process should be. I'm not saying studios shouldn't interfere because they're the ones putting up the money. Um, I'm just saying you shouldn't, you know, look to adapt midway through production you know you sit down the director the producers the the writers everyone sits down agrees on what story they're going to tell what kind of movie they're going to make and then once everyone agrees you let the director go make the movie because that's what you agreed was going to be the best movie to make and you don't adapt just to how your other movies are doing. And that's really what happened to Warner Brothers, okay? Is, in, from what I gather, you know, from these years of experience is, you know, after Batman v Superman, after Man of Steel, after not getting the success they wanted, they started playing with everything else that was in production, such as Suicide Squad, such as, you know, Tried to Be Wonder Woman, and Justice League, um, unfortunately a great tragedy, befell Zack Snyder and his wife. Uh, he had to leave the project. So, of course, what did Warner Brothers do? They wanted Avengers dollars, so they got the Avengers director, Joss Whedon. He came in. He had to put together a film, um, probably with a lot of notes of what the you know he was uh, you know told by the studio that he needed to do because again. The studio wasn't happy with Batman v Superman or Man of Steel, the previous Zack Snyder films. So, you know, they're like, hey, you made Avengers, make it more like Avengers. I'm assuming is what they said, which is why, you know, you got a few more laughs than you're probably going to get in this Zack Snyder cut of Justice League that's coming up on HBO Max. And from what I understand, too, from what we're told, that, um, you know, the head of Warner Brothers at the time, wouldn't let Whedon or anyone else move the release date. They were going to stick with the release date, even though they had run into issues uh, in production as far as the director leaving, and they had to reshoot stuff. They had to do a whole new edit of the film, writing changes, all that stuff. 
He would not budge. Why? Because the studio head wanted his bonus for that year. He needed that film to come out to make some money so he could get his bonus for that year. And, you know, people, as, as of late, you know, crap a lot on Joss Whedon. And I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, other parts with Joss Whedon production. But up until that point, to Justice League, to, to me, the problem was not, you know, Zack Snyder. The problem was not Joss Whedon. The problem to me was the studio. The studio was so set, I believe, in wanting to make what Marvel did. Even though Marvel, in that first phase leading up to Avengers, none of those films, you know, they did good, but not great. You know, they led up to it, is what it is. And Warner Brothers didn't accept that. They wanted, you know, that money right away. And that's when they started tinkering everything, when early films they felt like weren't working like they should. And by the time you got to Justice League, it was all one big mess. Now, since then, under new leadership, Walter Hamada, I believe, is the guy who's taken over Warner Brothers. You've gotten Aquaman. You've gotten Shazam. Um, you've gotten Joker. I think things are, you know, panning out a little better for them uh, going forward. And maybe this is one of those things where... Again, going back and kind of trying to fix the mistakes of what they did with a Zack Snyder cut of Justice League, with a, you know, possible air cut of Suicide Squad, which, again, I would love to see that one, too. But, you know, again, it all to me comes down to people have been campaigning for these uh, cuts of the film for years. And, you know, if, if you give in to one, you know... You got to give in to all of them, and I think that's a bad precedent to set. Okay, so I've spent way too much time babbling on my thoughts and ideas on the DCEU up till Justice League, which was a film that I didn't hate. I didn't hate it. I didn't think it was great, but I didn't hate it, although there, every time I go back and rewatch it, you know, I have issues with it, much like Man of Steel. Um, so that brings it to this weekend. Uh, Zack Snyder, of course, uh, going to release... His uh, original cut, the the vision, the the movie that he envisioned, he wanted to make before he left the project because of the family tragedy, coming to HBO Max. Now he's already said it's not going to be part of the DC continuity. That theatrical cut of Justice League is part of the DCU theatrical, you know, window. So you know, it's the one that's going to go with Aquaman and Shazam and Birds of Prey and all that. This is going to be something totally separate. I understand that. Some people might not. I get it. But what my hope is, is, again, the ultimate cut of Batman v Superman is probably one of my favorite comic book films. I mean, honestly, a top 10 in my eyes. Whereas, you know, the theatrical cut of Batman v Superman is at the bottom. So it's, you know, odd with that. But my hope is, is that this film, because the ultimate cut is kind of what Snyder wanted to do for the film... And you throw that in with the first film, Man of Steel. My hope is that if you take Man of Steel, the ultimate cut of Batman v Superman, and Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League, you get a nice, well-thought-out, uh, full trilogy. Now, it's not the full thing that he wanted. He wanted five movies. Now, Justice League, his version of it, is said to be 214 minutes, which is over three hours long, which, of course, obviously... You can, you know, cut into two movies. So really, we're getting four out of the five films that he actually intended. And Warner Brothers is putting in the money. That's the thing that surprises me most about this whole thing is that Warner Brothers is putting in, you know, 50, 60 more million dollars to let Zack Snyder finish his film, um, which I think, you know, has several things that it says about maybe the relationship Zack Snyder has with the studio. Um, you know, obviously the fan cry for it. Uh, but to me, you know, when you, Hollywood's a business, movie making is a business. And to me, I don't see how they're going to make that money up and then some by putting it on HBO Max. You know, you're not going to get 60 million plus dollars of new subscribers on HBO Max by putting this film out. And I know they need content on HBO Max. And I'm, again, happy, happy it's, it's coming out. But from a financial standpoint, I just don't see how it makes sense, which is why I never really believed that a Snyder Cut of Justice League would ever be released. But here we are. If Warner Brothers wants to fit the bill because maybe they feel guilty about how they bumbled the DCEU from the start, maybe that's what it is. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go roll down the Hollywood Reporter article and again, kind of hit the, the bullet points of what we learned from the Justice Con 
panel this weekend. And like I said, the main thing, 214 minutes is what it's going to be. Um, you know, he said he's not quite sure if you can fit that into episodes or how they're going to exactly shake it down. Um, but either way, you know, that's a good film. That's a good epic film. Um, we know we're going to get uh, Dark Side in it. Um, it's it's a film, you know, that I think would be fine. And that's one thing they, they worried about when Warner Brothers as far as the length of not only Justice League, but also Batman v Superman was, you know, they took 30 minutes out of the film because they wanted to make it shorter. Obviously, they could do more screens, uh, get more people in the seats, and make more money. And really, in my eyes, what they did was make a lesser film to where people didn't want to come back to see it. And I think if you would have taken that half hour, put it in there, you would have done better because it would have been a better film. More people would have went back to go see it. I probably would have went back a couple times to go see it. And to me, again, they screwed the pooch on that. And again, with Justice League, they told Joss Whedon, you know, here's three hours of the movie. You got to get it down to two hours and you got to, you know, change the tone of it completely. And, you know, that's, you know, oh, and you got to stay, you know, within the, the window and have it done on time. And I'm sorry, but that's just too much pressure for even a guy like, you know, Joss Whedon. They were hoping he was going to be some magical wizard to, to fix all their problems. And that's not how it works. So also one thing we learned from uh, this uh, panel as well is that next month DC fandom which is kind of a DC virtual comic con they're going to be doing and talking about not only you know comic books but all their movies all their TV stuff you know you, we had some you know DC comic stuff this weekend at comic con at home but it looks like they're really going to be pulling it out next month um, with DC fandom um, a virtual Comic Con talking about upcoming movies and TV shows and projects and getting a little more information on all that. And Snyder himself said we we're going to get our first trailer for his cut of Justice League on August 22nd. Now, usually when you put out a trailer like that, one is expecting at the end to give us a release date. That'd be nice. Honestly, I'm not responsible expecting a release date when you look at probably the work that has to be done um, mainly as far as effects special effects uh, the main thing that needs to be done in the film and that takes a lot of time so they're still working on it so in that sense I'm not expecting a release date but it'll be cool to see you know a, a trailer for the film another thing that Snyder has said is he's using none none of the reshoot stuff that Joss Whedon did, okay, this would be completely stuff that Snyder cut, um, or shot, excuse me, and, and that's the way he wants it, you know, he would rather burn it all up, I guess is what he said, than use anything that he didn't shoot, and it makes sense though, because, you know, from what we heard, he shot three hours of footage, I mean, there's plenty for there for him to mess with and play with and make a film out of, so he doesn't really need Joss Whedon's material, which, you know, some of it is fine. I think, you know, some of it would be just fine, uh, but uh, if it takes away all the shots of Henry Cavill's CGI lip, uh, I say yay, because to me, that was the worst part of Justice League. All right, Snyder said he is also working with Junkie XL on composing movie f uh, music for the movie, whereas the original one was Danny Elfman, you know, a little more established um, composer. Um, again, Warner Brothers wanted to go safe. You know, Danny Elfman is a safe choice for composing, even though I know Junkie XL, I think, did Batman v Superman, if I'm correct, um, for that. But yes, they, they, he's working with D Junkie XL on doing some composing for the film. Which the original, you know, theatrical version of Justice League, I liked. You know, there, there's some good stuff in there, definitely. Um, I like how Danny Elfman uh, incorporated some of that uh, original um, Batman theme, which uh, was really cool. And then, of course, the original Superman theme. You could hear both those notes in there, in uh, that. So, you know, paying tribute to the, the great musical past uh, that both those characters have. Now, one little treat we did get from this panel this weekend was a shot uh, that he's going to use, and it's Henry Cavill meeting up with Alfred, and he's in a black suit. So the black suit is real, ladies and gentlemen. And Snyder talked a little bit about how, again, he got a lot of pushback originally from the studio about a black suit. Again, making the film too dark, uh, not seeing how it fits in with everything. Um, this 
clip. It was okay. It was, you know, 12, 20 seconds, something like that. I'm not going to freak out about it like some people are, but, um, you know, it's it's a piece of the puzzle that, you know, is the Snyder Cut, and, you know, it's just a little tease that letting people know, yes, the black suit is going to be in this version of the film so you know if you get geeked out about it that's fine you know he could be wearing pink for all i care just make sure the film is still good now we also got teased of course a while ago about not only the the team we got were justice league but also other members so it was said that uh the colonel guy in man of steel and batman v superman is actually john jones the martian manhunter and that we might actually get the martian manhunter in this film but also another green character green lantern now in the theatrical cut when they were doing the history uh of kind of steppenwolf and the the new gods um we saw an old school green lantern fight alongside the the olympians and the atlanteans um we got a tease and that, that was a good thing about the the justice league film we got that little green lantern tease but allegedly we're getting a full-fledged green lantern probably going to be hal jordan here um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, again, what was shot, what wasn't, you know, how it's going to be incorporated, uh, should be very interesting. And I'm again, excited for more characters. I think Green Lantern is a, you know, a world much like kind of, I always say X-Men has their own pocket of the Marvel universe where they really don't need to be incorporated with the rest of the Marvel units to really, you know, flourish. You know, there's enough characters, enough storylines they don't need to be part of the Marvel Universe up on cinema or even in the comics to flourish very well. And Green Lantern, I think, is one of those pockets uh, of the DC Universe. There's so many characters and so many stories to tell. You could definitely, you know, leave them by themselves and still have a lot of stuff, which is why HBO Max is coming out with the Green Lantern series. Um, there's a lot of good stuff there, uh, rich stuff in the Green Lantern mythology that I think, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing in the, in the television show and give me a little tease of it in the film or the Zack Snyder uh, films would be great. Okay, so last part I want to talk about, guys, I know I'm going a little longer than what I usually do, is kind of one thing that Zack Snyder said is, quote, um, I'm just going to read the last paragraph of The Hollywood Reporter scene. Snyder said that he was looking forward to the opportunity to see all of these characters come together in the film over time, suggesting that it won't be quick or easy team-up. And he reiterated that his Justice League is largely about Cyborg, whose arc was largely cut out of the theatrical film. So, that's something we've been heard about for a while. Ray Fisher, who plays Cyborg in the film, had a much bigger story arc in this film which which makes sense if you look back at recent justice league origins with where you go to jeff johns's uh justice league uh new 52 adaptation which of course you know then was adapted um for animated into justice league war which again cyborg was a big part of telling his origin story ray fisher who is an accomplished um stage actor uh, he has gone, you know, in recently and talked about how horrible the set was with Joss Whedon. He, he, was, he rags on Joss Whedon. He rags on Jeff Johns. He rags on the producer, I forget his name, um, who has come since and, you know, kind of uh, rebutted his remarks. And Fisher is still at it. He's still at it saying that, you know, he's got other people that, um, you know, say how bad the set was under Joss Whedon and that he's under non-disclosure, so he can't go into details. But, you know, as soon as it's over, he, he's not going to let it go. He's not going to drop it. This is a whole separate issue. And again, it's it's all part of the, the controversial uh, that is Justice League. <laughs> Just to briefly go into it, because I don't want to go too much into, into the politics of it all um ray fisher you know if he felt like he was treated unfairly or joss whedon created a hostile work environment okay nobody else from the cast has come out and said that um i'm not saying it's not true i'm just saying no one else has said now he says other people on the crew they're they're going to come out and back him up and if they do great but i think you also have to think about it really like where this is a guy who you know, has been struggling as an actor to get into Hollywood uh, for a while. And, you know, Justice League, he was supposed to be a big part of. And he got cut a lot. 
honestly. And I'm not saying, you know, that's what's going on here. Not at all. But until more information is given, in my eyes, that's what it looks like. And, you know, I, I have no doubt that, you know, he could be telling the truth, but I just want some more sources to confirm what he says before I really, you know, give a solid opinion about what happened, as, as everyone should. But I'm also going to say this, is that Joss Whedon, who I've been a fan of for a while, he's not perfect. You know, there are allegations of him, you know, cheating on his wife and uh, some of the, the, uh, the, the things that he's done throughout his production. But when Ray Fisher came out with these first allegations, um, uh, I saw more people who have worked with Joss, who know him personally, support him rather than those against him. And Alan Tudyk, actor, Star Wars, Firefly, lots of stuff, came out in support of him, known him for years, and fanboys automatically attacked Alan Tudyk. Why? Because he was saying the unpopular thing is what it was. And to me, that that right there kind of shows a guy who knows Joss personally for years, has worked with him for years, and pe- fanboys who have no idea what Joss Whedon's like, think they know better than someone who knows him personally. And to me, that's, I mean, that, that's wrong in my eyes, you know? So I'm not saying, you know, Fisher is wrong in, you know, what he's saying about what happened, but also, again, going back to what I've been saying, Joss Whedon, regardless of what type of person he is, he was put in a really tough scenario where he came in uh, midway into production to, you know, take over for a tragedy that happened to the previous director. He was told he has to take three hours of footage and not only make it two hours, he has to change the, the story and the tone of the film, and he has to keep his release date. Um, that's that's quite the thing to do, f- to put on any director's shoulders, no matter how good or great he is. Um, so, yeah. I can imagine under those circumstances, he might have been a little high strung on production. On the set, he might have been under a lot of pressure to where he was probably a little short with people. Understandable. Whether, you know, it's what Fisher is talking about or not, I don't know. Again, it's all hearsay. It's one person saying this. When you get two people, three people, four people saying this, then, you know, I'm I'm more than happy to to listen to, to what's being said. Um... And all I realize I've just gone on way too far about this, and I'll probably get some comments about it. But either way, that's my stance on that. And really, that's kind of the end of the article there. Cyborg, a character who I like. I like him more in Teen Titans because I grew up with him in Teen Titans. Going to Justice League, um, it is what it is, and that's that. And I think I'm done for today, guys, because I'm just going to keep digging myself a bigger hole. But time for you to fire back on the social media groups and Gmail account. Let me know what you think about this new information in regards to uh, the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League coming to HBO Max next year. What are you excited about? What did you pick up on? Is there something I missed that you are you know want to put in there? Fire back, of course. Dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com. The Facebook group, Twitter account. You can find me personally, Slim Day Spring 12 on Twitter and Instagram, guys. And that's going to be it for me today. I got to get to work. Um, hopefully, I will be able to put out uh, another episode sometime soon. But uh, this has been a good one. You know, it's one of those things where there's a lot to talk about with Justice League. And we will continue to talk about it, I'm sure, until the film comes out and after. It's, it's, it's one of those films I think we can always, always talk about. But uh, that's it, guys. Go out. Enjoy your week. And until next time, may the Force be with us all.